Right, so in this quick video, it's uh, just to explain how we use data exchange files and how we can use that um, from transferring from one type of software to another. So the first thing I'm gonna draw is the base of the light. And the base of the light, uh, to do that, I'm gonna change this to five millimeters, which is the grid. And we're in 2D design at the moment. And zoom in a little bit. Now at this point, I'm just gonna draw, I need my grid lock switched on. Just need to draw some um, sort of features in so we can see how quickly we can start to model um, these devices and at that point that's me ready to zoom in okay now I need to find the center of this square and um, so I could join the diagonals but because I know where the grid set now what I also need to do is to change the grid so if I change this grid now to be 2.5 and 2.5, that should give me the center of that square, which it does indeed, which is there. Right, now at that point, I'm then gonna draw a circle, and from there, if I click onto the center, and I'm gonna use the measurements that I can see down at the relative at the bottom, and I'm gonna make that so it is um, three centimeters. So that needs to be 15, really, so there we go. So that's that bit onto there, so that's three centimeters. In reality, it probably might need to be a bit bigger than three centimeters or 30 millimeters. But as it's a quite a small lamp um, and it needs casting, we can always change the size should we need to. Right, so at this point, if I just delete the bits that I don't need, so that's everything that's in here. And you can start to see how we get the profile of the shape quite rapidly. So these bits on here. Now because I know that I'm going to be exporting this into Pro Desktop, um, I need to make sure that whenever I draw things that the lines are absolutely accurate. Now I need this to be about eight centimeters or 80 millimeters. So if I do a radius of 40, click on to OK. And I need to make sure I delete all the lines because if I don't, um, Pro Desktop doesn't like that because it's on a closed edge profile and it won't allow me to extrude the image. So, whoops. Um, if I cut out all the bits that I need, there we go. That's pretty much ready to go. So at that point I need to put a center point in and that's gonna be five mil. So there we go, two and a half. And if I zoom in, uh, what we should be able to see is that's our main image. So our main image is ready to export into Pro Desktop. Now at this point I'm gonna save it. So if I go to file and I'm gonna save that as the um, lamp base. So from there, um, I'll put it as, actually if I put it as lamp 12, for year 12 and 13, and click on to save. And I'm also going to extrude, so we export that one now. And I'm gonna change it to a data exchange file. Okay, which is a, a DXF file. So from the DXF file, I'm also going to call that lamp 12. So there we go, lamp 12. And that's ready to go. I don't need the DTD at the end of it though. Lamp 12. Okay, so at that point, I'll keep the R command because I want all the, the details in there to be correct. I'm then going to open up Pro Desktop and go to File, New, click on to Design open up the area, um, make sure it's on initial, which it is, go to file, click on to import, click on to DXF file, from there and um, we can browse it, but I think we know where that bit's gonna be, so we're gonna call it lamp 12 DXF, open that one up, click on to next, yes, that's what it looks like, finish, and then if we activate the sketch, we can see that we've got that bit down there, so if we just zoom in a little bit, I then go to feature extrude and from that extrusion it needs to be three centimeters tall or 30 millimeters so I need to click on to OK and then we've got our image exactly there. Now at this point I need to bear in mind I'm going to be casting this so this will be 3D printed at a cast so I need to put some draft angles on. So the draft angles I'm going to put on the edges so I'm just going to click on to all the edges and I do that by holding the shift key while I'm selecting and I'm just gonna go to feature, round edges, click onto round edges and we'll make those 10. So click onto 10, 
click on to OK. Now that there is ready to be 3D printed. It has got to have other holes in, but obviously because I'm thinking of how it's got to be cast, um, I'm not going to put those holes in. So at this point, I'm going to go to File and save that one. And I'm going to save this one as Lamp 12. Okay, and that's a desk file. Click on to save. And then I'm going to go to File, Export, and export this part ready to 3D print as a stereo lithography file, an STL file. So click on to browse, and that's also going to be Lamp 12. And click on to save. Click on to OK. Now, why it's here? Because I'm doing the assembly drawing at the same time. We've got to put the other features in. So I'm just going to select the face on there, click on to work plane, create new work plane plane of objects. It's called work plane one. I could probably do be renaming that one to be fair. And just so we know. So I'm going to call this holes and click on to OK. So we've just changed that one. And I'm going to zoom into that one in a second. So new sketch, click on to OK. So now we should be zooming in and I'm going to start to draw the lines in. Now I know that's going to be the center straight away. So at that point I draw a line and make these construction lines. And I'm going to use these construction lines to help me put together the centers for the hole. Sorry, I was just concentrating on what I was doing then. Control G. There we go. And I need to just draw the line going down here as well. Start going down. Control G. And Control G just makes some construction lines. Now, just to um, set this up, I'm not sure why it's moved there. From the edge, I'm going to measure that bit, and it's 13.3. So let's see what this one is from there. 13.3. So I would imagine these would be the same. Right, so if I move that one to 13.3, and I need to write these down just so I want to do the other drawings 13.3, and know what the measurements are going to be. So 13.3, click on to OK. And of course, I could always produce the engineering drawings. It'll have that information written on. And that should be 13.3. Ah, so we've got a bit of an issue there. So 12. OK, so it may be just how this has been rotated. So what I will do in this case um, is just delete that bit. Let's try and do it the other way around. Thirteen point three nine. It's uh, I think it's just the way that this is projected. But as long as we've got these from the right sort of angle, it doesn't really matter too much about the length, as long as it's the same distance from where that rim is. So if we rotate it round, it's going from that rim. Right at that point, then um, I'm quickly going to draw um, a line going across. So I need to just get my line command back. Draw a line going across. And that's got to be changed to construction. A line going across again, change to construction. And I need these um, at least 10 millimeters from the top and the bottom. So from there to there, I'm going to click on to 10. Type in 10 mil. There we go. Click on to 10. Do exactly the same at the top. To click, click, take it across. Click on to 10 mil. Okay, and that gives us the focal points or the center points for when I'm going to draw the hole. So I'm going to put a 6mm hole through. So that's got 3 to start off with with an external diameter. The 6mm will be because obviously I may need to tap these and we can always make these bigger. And this is just really for my engineering drawings. Um, and they're easy to come in back into the drawing and edit them. So at this point I'm then going to put it back, go to extrude. Feature extrude, and from that point, just take them right the way through and subtract material. So we've got the holes in. If we go back to it and activate it, and then select these holes, so I can get the drawing back and then just copy these bits. So if I press Control C now, as you would do in any Windows package, I'm going to put it back into Trimetric. Click onto the opposite face. And we're going to call this holes two. So there's work plane, new work plane, holes two. Click on to OK. And at that point, I can start drawing onto this bit. And now, because I've already copied and pasted them, 
what I should be able to do is paste them into place, go back into trimetric, go to feature extrude, and move that part through subtract material. And there we have the base of the lamp. Now that's in the space of 10 minutes. Now what would happen with the data exchange file is at this point I could send this to anywhere in the world and that could be 3D printed or rapid prototyped or machined, CNC laid, etc. So within 10 minutes we've come up with you know, not really a complex part um, but a part that we can start to model and see if it will fit together. So at that point I'm just going to save this now. Um, so file save and that's pretty much that ready to go.